Hi, my name is J.C. Gwen, the Amstad Man, and I've had the luxury of fishing this lake for over 30 years, and during that time, I've learned a lot from a lot of people, and I'm always trying to return that to my fellow anglers. So I'm trying something new. We're going to try a more comprehensive video fishing report because there's a lot of people like me that maybe learn better visually than they do reading or hearing about it. Now, some of the videos that I've put together, some of the little sections, is I'm going to show you some of the grass we've been catching fish out of, both the pepper grass or podweed, some people call it, and the hydrilla, as well as how to fish this lake when the hydrilla is not so good, like it was in this case this year. You know, the summer, the grass didn't come up near as high as it should have because of all the floodwaters and, and high, water, high water that we got. So some of the baits that we're really trying to attack is when we're fishing the grass, the uh, matted up podweed or, hydro or uh, pepper grass, when we're fishing that, I'm kind of attacking it with three different lures. Now when I approach these in the morning, I basically have a four prong approach. I'm fishing a super spook in a baby bass pattern on the outside edge of the grass as it's sparse. Looking for any of them that's been chasing shad on the outside edge or starting to school up and feed. As I get closer to the grass, I've been kind of taking a three-pronged approach. When it's dead calm, kind of like today, I've been throwing this Spro Frog over the top and kind of working it uh, with not any set cadence, but making sure that I put at least a four to uh, eight second pause over the open spots and about a three to four second pause over the closed ones. Now the days that it gets a little more windy, I'm throwing a Spro Poppin' Frog and this allows me to kick up a little more water and attract a little more attention and it seems to be getting the better bite for me. Several fish that we caught over the last couple weeks, better fish have come off the popping frog. Now sometimes for sheer numbers or if people have a hard time fishing it, we've also been fishing with a buzz frog. Now the great thing about this is it's like having a weedless buzz bait to go across the podweed or the pepper grass and the hydrilla. It's been getting a lot of bites, but it seems to be great for numbers, not necessarily many big fish yet. Now as far as the type of buzz frog you want to throw, color wise, white's been working on cloudy days, but I've basically been trying to get anything that's got a little bit of an orange body, whether it be Louisiana crawl or something like that. So as long as it's got a little bit of orange on the body, you got the right color to be throwing out here. For the past couple of days, the water temperature has been starting around 72 to 74 degrees. This due to the fact that we've been fortunate enough to have some lows in the mid-60s, high 60s. Um, when this happens, I'm getting out and targeting this more some sparse, uh, submerged pod grass or podweed, which you're seeing here. Um, and I've also been trying to target some of the submerged hydrilla, like you're seeing here. This hydrilla hasn't quite got up to the surface. There's actually about two to three feet above it um, before it hits the top but that hydrilla is about nine to ten feet tall that water right there is approximately 13 feet deep and as you can see here I'm targeting a lot of matted hydrilla um, a lot of my bigger fish are coming out of here when you can find it even though it looks a little brown on top you can see how healthy and green it is uh, underneath the surface and underneath the canopy um, we've been targeting this as well um, usually for about the first hour to two hours of the day. You get a little bit longer if you catch some clouds. Now with fall rapidly approaching, and it actually looks like we're going to get a true fall, the jerk bait becomes a very big aspect in our fish catching. Right now I'm catching pretty decent numbers on it. Anytime I come across what I call a shorter flat or a smaller flat, if they won't come up and hit a top water, I've been going to a jerk bait. Now the key with this jerk bait, this one is a lucky craft. I'm fishing a baby bass pattern because of the amount of small baby bass in the area. It's a readily available food source and one I've noticed that they're eating quite frequently. Now on those short flats, I'm taking that jerk bait and I'm trying to target 10 to 15 feet. Here on the graph you can see 13 feet. This is actually uh, standing podweed or pepper grass. And I'm ripping it uh, as a suspending dirt bait. I'm ripping it across this and having it stop right at that five foot mark, right over the top of these trees. And it's been producing for me quite well. Now, of course, later in the day, as the water temperature starts to climb up, I'm moving out a little bit deeper. You can see the hydrilla here comes up to about 10 feet. It's, 
you know the canopy itself is about 10 feet I am doing some punching with uh, one ounce jigs and a reverse Texas rig but I'm also doing a lot of cranking over the top of it um, this is effective in this range as well as you can move out a little bit deeper um, I've even moved out as deep as 35 40 feet with that rattle trap or red eye shad um, here you can see it's sitting out in 32 we've got hydrilla comes up a little bit uh, as long as it's green you're safe but I'm basically taking that rattle trap and I'm dropping it down the grass and I'm ripping it up um, catching a lot of these suspended fish and fish that are right over the top and of course anytime I can move in those areas and find a bait ball like this um, I know that I'm gonna be quite a bit uh, more successful I usually won't spend a lot of time if I don't see some kind of activity on the graph um, so keep that in mind when you're searching for areas to fish but not least once we get into the grass beds itself as we get toward the day I've been basically having a two-prong approach with my Texas rig on the outside edge of the grass and as it gets a little bit hotter and the day progresses a little bit further I move out to a little bit deeper weather water find the grass and I'm basically throwing two things um, I'm throwing this hags undertaker um, this one's in green pumpkin purple, which has been a phenomen phenomenal color for me over the last couple of days, as well as the Tornado 6.5. Now, both these baits are really good for me right now when I'm working around that grass because the ribs on it help displace quite a bit of water, and I think that's given me an added benefit in helping the fish find my bait. In addition to flipping my Texas rig, Undertaker, and... Uh tornado around the edges is the hydrilla I've also been kind of concentrating my efforts on secondary points in the main part of the bigger creeks um, these are points toward the mouth of it and I usually won't fish it unless it's got some deep water close by but I'm kind of taking and following these points as they drop out into 22 23 feet um, and then as deep as 28 you know here you can see the point come out it drops down to 23 24 there's still trees some fish around it um, I will actually follow that point all the way out until it gets down into uh, the 28 to say 35 um, here you can see the edge of a hydrilla bed that's coming up and fish are stacked along it you know um, if they won't follow that Texas rig down then I go back to that uh, red eye <laughs> I hope this fishing report has been a little bit more helpful for you and hope that it helps you make the best of your trip down to the Big Blue. Anytime that I can help or offer a lending hand, whether you book with me or not, please feel free to stop by my website at www.theamistadman.com or call me on my cell phone, area code 830-719-9006. Like I said, I hope this really helps you and I hope it makes you the best of your trip on the Big Blue. And as always, Castaway Guide Service is finding new and innovative ways to help anglers make the best of their trip. If you want to create a fishing trip of a lifetime, please give me a call.